Emirates Team New Zealand have just revealed and launched their race boat for this year's America's Cup. Now, there are two things I think are really interesting about it. One thing which is completely new, and one thing which is really surprisingly old. Before I get into those, I'll just go over some of the quick details about this hull. What is different or a step forward from Tiruhutai? and where the similarities are with the other new generation boat we saw launch just last weekend. Starting at the bow, um, very plum bow, and actually the um, bustle skeg starts off as a very kind of sharp keel edition, kind of reminiscent of what's on Patriot, which is a bit different to Teruhutai. Um, the bow initially is quite sharp and splays out towards the deck, um, now that's quite similar of all these boats to kind of protect against the nose diving. And in fact, in many ways, is a little bit less extreme than Teruhutai. Teruhutai, if you remember, had the um, had quite a lot of volume above the widest point in the beam as it um, as it kind of went in, kind of like in a bulbous fashion, sweeping air up onto the jib. Pretty much otherwise flat deck, so none of the little bulges or intricacies that we saw on a Lingi's boat last week. But nevertheless, as we go back through the boat, we see some of the typical features start to emerge as well, like the, the bustle. I'm going to call it a bustle. It runs the full length of the keel, really, and it's just kind of a bulbous end plating bit with a, with a kind of sharper skeg on the end of it that is quite similar to what we're seeing on a lingi and something that we first really saw on a teruhutai and that like a lingi's boat they've just launched goes all the way back to the transom forming like a moth hole at the very back of the boat and the rudder is mounted on the bottom of the bustle with all the um, systems for the rudder rake hidden away within the hull within the bustle so a bit of an aero gain there and i think for me what's really interesting in terms of the changes is something we speculated about in our preview video and that is kind of a lesser trench they still got a trench but it's definitely not as pronounced as it was on teruhutai and we said that actually that really deep trench on teruhutai could be in some ways kind of stopping the flow getting over in the sails and obviously sails work by bending the flow but those pods would be kind of straightening it back out now as we move back in the boat towards the transom we see some quite big differences to teruhutai first of all the pods taper off a lot sooner in a similar way to what we've seen on lingi so they don't go right the way to the aft corners and that makes sense because there are no running backstays to support that anymore so there's no point having material back there but in a kind of a different angle on this to what we saw with a lingi lingi had this kind of really clean flat surface at the back of the boat giving a massive huge end plate for the mainsail. What we see from Emmett's Team New Zealand here is actually the whole back of the boat, where the pods end, the whole back of the boat then sweeps in, giving quite a rounded transom to it. Um, this, to be honest, for me, is actually quite reminiscent of what we saw on Luna Rossa in the last cup. And if you look at the boat from the back, it kind of looks pretty similar to Luna Rossa, but with um, kind of little pods. Um, Right, getting on to the big new feature of this boat, which I'm quite excited about because it's a new main sheet system. I love the sail control systems. And um, we've got something completely new here from Emirates Team New Zealand. It's been a big talking point how in this cup, a lot of the teams have moved from a system which is like Emirates had in the last America's Cup where they had two clue boards for the twin skins and then a main sheet ram in between those. I was always quite critical of that because I felt it was quite a lot of hydraulics to get between those skins at the trailing edge where you'd want them to be quite close together. And a lot of the other teams have been moving on, working on moving that main sheet hydraulics down to the deck. Well, Emirates Team New Zealand have gone one step further here and not only moved the main sheet hydraulics to below deck, but they've actually got the two um, clue sheeting angle adjusters on the Traveller 
um, car as well as the main main sheet. So we've effectively got two main sheets going up to the two clues of the sails with the sheeting angles being able to be adjusted independently as you can see in this picture here. Now again, I've said the transom looks quite like Luna Rossa. That concept has kind of gone full circle and is very similar to again what we saw in Luna Rossa with their below deck boom, effectively hiding all the um, hydraulics away below the deck. Um, where it differs from what Luna Rossa had is Luna Rossa's was linked up below deck to the main mast rotation system. And here, I'm pretty convinced that's not the case. I can't see any evidence of a large mass rotation system um, in the same way linked up. Um, I think as well with the way the rules are being able to link two controls together via the electronic control system, that that's how they'll link mass rotation up. And that seems to be the way other teams have gone. Okay, so what is it that's old, which I think is really interesting on this boat and a bit of an eye-opener for the other teams? Well, it is the foils. Yes, because I'm fairly convinced um, that these foils are the foils from the last America's Cup, which were raced by Terra Hutai. Um, just overlaying the foil rule box from the previous Cup, you can see um, they look pretty snug fit in the old rule box and look... Um, like they're too small for the new rule box and that and the foils just look like Terra Hutai's foils they've got this blended foil and if you've been following the recon and watched our video on our kind of um, predictions for foils we were saying how Emirates Team New Zealand have really moved towards a more torpedo like central bulb on their foil um, with the larger wingspan that's quite interesting because you know a lot has been made about the, the kind of logistical um, difficulties Emirates Team New Zealand are going to have in getting their boat from Auckland to Barcelona and the time on the water they'll lose during that transit. But the fact that they've launched this boat and started commissioning this boat with old foils means that they can keep on developing their foils, which are arguably the most um important part of the design package they can keep on developing those and then possibly let those foils be constructed and fly them out to meet them in Barcelona after the boat has made that long transit which uh, the rumours are that's going to be done by ship so take quite quite a long time. Now this is interesting and whilst that's a big bonus for Emirates Team New Zealand considering the unique situation they are in with their location but that could still be a good route for all the other teams to get their boat on the water, get it commissioned with old foils. Now, I think that's going to be harder for the other teams because I think their legacy AC-75 foils were clearly a generation behind Terra Hutai's. So maybe this is something that Emirates Team New Zealand, it was really an option only for them as a team because of how far ahead of their time their last generation foils were that they are... Um, kind of usable with this new generation of boat whereas the old teams are, I think teams like Ineos for example could they use their old legacy foils well technically yes but maybe they're so you know so out of date that they you know it would just be difficult to even commission a new generation boat using those old foils um, so an interesting element there which has enabled Emirates Team New Zealand to potentially claw back some of the some of the months they'll lose transporting their boat from Auckland to, to Barcelona. Right, that's it for me. We are expecting the um, unveiling of Luna Rossa's race boat just tomorrow. So we'll be back in a few days with my initial impression of that. And again, uh, once we get time, we're going to get all the lads together and have a thorough chat through of the boats we've seen as they launch.